No, not going to be part of the machine then, no? No, I don't want to be part of the machine collective. <laughs> okay. It was awful and I hate it. How am I supposed to put this thing on top of this thing? Oh, you put the satellite thing in here? Yeah, I'm supposed to... Ah! Did she realize that the collective hive mind was here? I don't think so. Maybe she did and she just doesn't care. Uh, yeah, up here? Wow, that was quick. You quickly set the receiver up, noting that it's a lot bigger than you thought it was. Oh, and you're being ambushed by evil cyborg ninjas. Shit! They're attacking from all sides. Let's quietly sneak out of here so we don't have to fight them. Ow! Or do that. I think you're being attacked by ninjas still. I don't know where they are. That's what makes them so ninja-like. Oh, sounds there's one. Yeah, it sounds like Mike's fighting one of them over here. Well, not for long. Ow! God dang it. Oh, they just have sniper rifles. Uh, I'm less interested now. I will take those those 40 rounds of 308 armor piercing though. Uh, evil cyborg ninjas got up close and personal for whatever reason. Yeah, for some with a sniper rifle for some reason. Mike, if you had the choice, would you never have to sweat again or never have to eat again? I, I don't mind sweating. Sweating is actually feels pretty good on a nice hot day. Oh, man, I hate sweating. I know, which is why the choice might be more difficult for you. But I like to eat, and I like to sweat. Actually, well, just because you don't have to eat doesn't mean that you can't eat. Oh, so I can eat and I can sweat. You can still eat. Uh-huh. You just don't, you don't require it to stay alive. So which one? I don't know what the drawbacks are to any of these. If I selected, I wish I didn't have to eat, then I could, then I could just go at wherever I wanted and not have to worry about it lacking food yeah you just don't have to worry about food anymore but if i if i choose the other one which i didn't have to sweat then then I, you never sweat i could go to whatever hot areas i wanted to and like I, I wouldn't die from heat exhaustion no you just wouldn't sweat the thing the scenario you were proposing is that i wouldn't need water to survive in the desert yes you would why because i need to sweat it out because you still have to drink water the what? body needs water you have a degree in nursing yeah you need water to survive. You need food to survive. This is a dumb hypothetical. This isn't a about. dumb hypothetical. Either you don't have to sweat anymore, or you don't have to eat food ever again. So this is like choosing your own superpower. Yes. W would you rather no longer need food to live, or would I no longer require water? Sweating to, live? to re regulate your temperature. You still need water. But why do I need water? Because your body needs water to continue surviving. But it's not going to use it for sweating. No, it just won't use it for sweat. So I would have to sweat. That's a dumb superpower because I'll still need water. Oh my I'll, god, I'll, I'm I'll done with this. Water. I'll still need water. So why would I choose that as the option? If you choose it, you never have to eat again. You don't need to drink water. Uh, then I will definitely choose that one. That, that's You're making that choice even more palatable. I'm done with this. <laughs> this, is a stu this was a stupid question and I'm done with it. What do you want? I'm kind of busy. He erected the receiver like you asked. Yes. Now, I just hope they're still making television programs on the East Coast. Anyway, great job, henchman. For your efforts, I give you a B plus. Hooray. Again, being very generous. You may not be the most exciting henchman I've ever seen, but you can definitely walk from point A to point B and occasionally press a button. But alas, I've run out of stuff to do. Right now, I guess I'll help Disaster in Lab Alpha. As for you, well, there's nothing I need from you anymore. Hooray! Okay, goodbye. Oh, by the way, I found Disaster's stash of chems. Why don't you have a few? He's got plenty as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. I don't want any of them. Also, while I was setting up the receiver, I got attacked by ninjas. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I could whip up some anti-ninja spray or something for you. Actually, that could make a cool project. A spray that summons samurais. Everybody knows that samurais and ninjas are natural enemies. Whatever, I'm done with this weeb shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> Speaking of stealing drugs from Dr. Disaster, we have the gun now. We can break into his room and see what he's got. Oh, yeah, that's true. Don't mind us, Doc. Just gonna raid your panty drawer. If there's actual panties in there, it's gonna be awkward. So what's in your main computer office? I can't hack his terminal. Ah, uh, we're all too unscientific. Yeah, I'm too stupid. Dr. Klein's glove, that probably shouldn't still be there. That's it. Not a whole lot for us, huh? Yeah, this whole thing was uh, kind of a bust. Well, I guess we still have people to find. 
I don't think you fully appreciate just how much I hate myself. Where's this coming from? No, I don't know. No, it's a great feeling to Whoa, have. Whoa, did you see that? Yeah, it was a, it was this person. Dr. Blight, you're a small child. Huh, I was wondering if you'd ever come and visit me. I know, I know. Who wants to hang out with some little kid? I get that. But the truth is, I'm one of the only people actually holding this place together. And with your help, maybe we'll pull it back from the edge. My name is Dr. Blight. I am a clone of Dr. Disaster when he was 14. I contain all of the knowledge of a 76-year-old genius, but with a youthful body. Nice. Why? Many of the flaws that Dr. Disaster has did not transfer to me, so I consider myself the most valuable of his clones. Wow, that's incredibly egotistical. But I don't concern myself with science. I'm more focused on securing the big MT2. So I've taken it upon myself to reactivate all protocols. However, despite my undeniable intellect, I still have the body of a 14-year-old. Egotistical! So I'll need someone big and strong willing to help. What are you doing in this place, Dr. Blight? Well, this old lab used to be where we housed our security terminal. Turns out we moved that to the security centrifuge. And then when an evil AI took over that building, we split up these security switches and moved them to different parts of the perimeter. We really need to take out that AI. Yeah, we probably should do something but about that. But of course, that. Dr. Disaster forgot to inform me of that. The one clone whose fresh brain hasn't been decayed by age. Yes, you're perfect. So I came down here to activate security, but all I found was a note telling me that the switches had all been moved. And then I got trapped here. I mean, I got down here just fine. Hey, since you're technically my henchman too, why don't you go activate all the security protocols around the big MT2? Sounds like a good job. Oh boy, flipping switches. After all, you do happen to have weaponry and armor. I, for one, must preserve my brain. So I'll sting my way to the disaster piece and wait for you. So, pick up an AK and become a child soldier! Yeah, he's too smart to be a child soldier, Zach. All those people that did become child soldiers, if they were smart, they wouldn't have done that, because that's a bad life choice. I think most of them had no choice whatsoever or were forced to be child soldiers. Oh yeah, almost like being a child soldier is a bad thing, and maybe you shouldn't be pressuring people to do that. He's a jerk! He's got shin splints. Kid, take this AK and go shoot stuff. Jeez. Well, wait, the BMT has a security system outside of its evisceration field? The security protocols were put in place in the early days of the Big MT2's development, first installed by Dr. Catastrophe, I believe. However, after his death, the security was switched off for unknown reasons. I suspect it was linked to his vitality for some reason. The state of the crater has steadily declined since the first few days, and with all these unwanted and unlucky running around, we need that system. But hopefully once each system is activated, you'll start to see more secure shots and holograms around the area. Hopefully. We won't go looking for all your switches, but if we find one, we'll push it, I guess. I suppose. We'll see around. Be mindful of the work hazards around here. Uh-huh. This place isn't exactly up to OSHA standards. Just a heads up. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you don't say. You found another note? Yep. There's a lot you still don't know. How many boxes have you looked in? How many people have you killed? How much of the world have you really changed? How many feet have you really walked? How many times did you have to start over again? A lot! Yeah? Yes, yes. You know you can't kill him, right? I'm just trying to get him to pass out so he'll wake up with full health. Oh, good. He's just regaining health. <laughs> Fuck you! Fine, I'm leaving. This is not that huge of a sewer system. You guys could have gone back to the dome at any time. Yeah, he said he got stuck down here, and yet we didn't have to unlock any doors or do anything to get him out. I think he was lying to you, Zach. This is where the third doctor is. The abomination. Uh, oh, whoa! Oh, whoa, 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 yeah. This looks like the thorn. This is a, ooh, oh, whoa, oh, hey, 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 hey. So, Hopefully there's no innocent civilians down there, but just in case. You might actually hit Dr. Abomination. Oh, whatever. You, you, you don't care? No, not really. We're bringing him back is only our mission. We'll bring back his corpse then. Remember what he said about if we find a D if we find a corpse, we just bring a DNA sample and reclone them? He said found a corpse, not made a corpse. He doesn't want you to kill his clone. I think he does. Do 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 the Abomination Lab! Yeah? Is this Dr. Abomination? Hello, henchmen. Welcome to my lab. 
I was informed by communication fluids that you would be coming to meet me. What do communication fluids taste like? I am thankful you have arrived. Together, may we decimate the surface of the planet with our most evil inventions. No one is safe from our wrath. Yeah, decimate just means 10%. Ha. 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 <laughs> He's laughing. Ha. Why is one of Dr. Disaster's clones a literal brain in a jar? When the master copy decided to clone himself, he wanted to experiment with the concept of transhumanism. <laughs> the concept of transcending one's mortal body. Uh-huh. I am that experiment. No, you still have one. All needless body parts have been removed. Only my central processor has been left. You mean your brain. Sharing peak efficiency. Yeah. All the nutrients I need is delivered to me through tubes. Now you need Only those. Only positive huh? chemicals are regulated through my mind and sharing no negative thoughts. I'm just gonna draw some googly eyes on here. I do not suffer. I do not feel pain. It is possible that I have become the ideal human. One day, all other humans may share this same state. I don't think so. They will revel in their liberation. No. Liberation from the dregs of their natural state. N no. Ha. Ha. Hey, he's laughing ha, again. Ha. Pretty, pretty funny. Yeah. Ha. You know, I got ha, legs. I can move. Insert audio gag normally contained within laughing here. <laughs> ha. <laughs> ha. Why didn't you insert that ha. in there? I'm not going to do it for you. You're not really transhuman. You still have a body. Yours is just made out of glass and fluids now. So what do you do anyway? Because it doesn't really look like you can do a whole lot. I am head of surveillance. Ah. Not for security, but for observation. I observe the many active experiments in a natural setting, completely hands-off. Ah, you're the brains of this operation. I record all important discoveries, as well as store the information gathered during the initial experiments at this crater. You're a record keeper. I find that scientific investigation is often so sterile, too organized. How will we ever be able to apply our findings in a chaotic environment? I'm gonna spit in your tank. The outside open world is the best place to observe nature. Science untethered and unceasing. Sounds like a paradise, right? Look, do you got any jobs for me? God, I hope he doesn't have jobs for me. I do not need much. I will not ask you to fetch anything. Ooh. I will not ask you to kill anything. Oh, thank God. I will simply ask you to sustain my existence. The V-13 medical interface over there simply needs repairing. Would you please repair that for me? Oh, is that all? There is no rush. However, without that machine, I will surely dry up in this tank. I will most likely start to rot within a day, and you would have to clean me up. Gross! I'm not doing that! Is that what you desire? To scoop the slimy remains of a rotting brain out of a foggy glass jar? No! If not, please proceed to the machine. This is a lot easier of a task than I thought. I thought he was going to ask you to swap brains. Thank God he didn't ask that. Please return safely. And thank you for your services. Just gotta flip the switches, right? Just gotta flip a switch. Yeah, it's just like one of... Here. Oh. <laughs> what the... Hey, whoa! Some guy followed us! <laughs> what the hell did you come from? <laughs> you could have stopped him, Mike! Good door guard! Uh, this... this one? You open up the side panel of the machine and look at the writhing mass of plastic tubes constantly circulating this white-colored liquid. Gross! The stuff condenses on the outside of the tubes and drips down like milk sweat. You're not entirely sure what the machine is for, but you figure that if you examine it long enough, you'll figure something out. Yeah, exactly. And all I gotta do is remove these potential blockages. And you have done such a thing! You removed them with your hands. 
With the warmth and rubbery texture of the tubes, it makes you feel like you're digging into someone else's intestines. Oh, superior life form, my ass. You discover in the back that there are tubes that are dry. Tracing the tubes back to the source, you find several which have clogged up about the white fluid, somehow solidified inside. After opening up the tubes and dumping the white mucus on the floor, you reconnect the tubes and the liquid begins to flow naturally. I probably did it. Maybe? Yeah, it's totally fixed now. Greetings, henchmen. Good news! It was easy to fix that machine for you. Good news, everyone! Thank you. Thank that you. That feels so much better. I was only kidding about the true function of that machine. Oh? It merely reflavors the biogel I consume. Normally, I am incapable of tasting the biogel. However, the machine fills it with a protein that is absorbed into my brain and gives me pleasurable sensations. Ew. Somewhat similar to taste. Somewhat. Oh. Somewhat, yeah. Though satisfactory, it is ultimately not required for my survival. That was a small prank I played on you. <laughs> ha. 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 I have tricked you. You've made a fool out of us. But this next mission is not a joke. The main terminal I use to access the Big Mountain 2's surveillance has obtained a virus that has locked me out. I will need you to manually hack into it and run the antivirus. Then we turn control back to me. Please do make haste, henchman. Alright, let's go find this computer. Hello, computer! We're running the antivirus program and then we'll return access to the abomination. There you go, there you go. Greetings, henchmen. I've just been floating here, thinking about all things science. We have regained you access. You have done well. I can now see everything you do. Everything in this crater. Oh, you're ugly Thank now. you. But there is one problem. <laughs> Another one? Without proper medical attention, I predict that my needs for survival may not be adequately supplied. Mm. Especially in the regions of neurosurgery. Oh, no. Luckily, I have an Autodoc 3 to help me with that. Until it broke down recently, can you please go find out what's wrong with it? I thought you said you didn't have anything for us. I'm sure you'd be happy to provide me with medical attention. But let's just say that it's safer to rely on a machine designed to do just that. All right, we'll go take care of that. I am the superior life form. I have transcended beyond the need for biological human bodies. Also, I need fluids. Also, I need pipes cleaned. Also, I need my cage refilled. Also, change the newspapers at the bottom of my tank. You don't need to be a certified brain surgeon to know that this thing is no longer up to industry standards, but Dr. Abomination doesn't seem to mind whether it's outdated or not, aside from just looking like an accident waiting to happen. You're not immediately sure why it won't turn on. Well, let's check the medical equipment inside. Mm, yep, can't make heads or tails of it. No matter how you look at it, you're not sure what's wrong with it. The vision battery's not busted or anything. All the equipment works fine. Maybe you just need to take some time to book up on your medical or repair skills. Oh, bull crap! I'm gonna check the power source! Mm, yep, the battery's fine, but the mechanism that draws power from it is completely fucked. The only affordable option would be to throw this piece of junk out and get a new one. Hopefully he understands. I regret to inform you that the auto dock is fucked. It's just completely fucked. How unfortunate. This means I can no longer live all the way out here by myself. At least not for longer than a few days. As much as I hate to admit it, this means I will have to move back in with the other disaster clones. Yes, it does. They will provide me with medical care. I'm sure they won't. And comic relief. I prefer the solitude of my own lab here in the Divided Sector. But in the interest of continued progress, I will relinquish my place here. And in the interest of having all the quest givers in one place... Would you be kind enough to carry me back... To Doctor Disaster. Yeah, sure, we can, I can do that. I can survive within this specially designed jar for a while, but only he will be able to put me back in a machine that can sustain my life force. All right, get in the pickle jar. You've been kind to me, henchman, and I want to reward you. 
But first, I ask you do this one more thing for me. We said we would! Let's head back to Dr. Disaster and bring the brain. Hmm. Uh, ow, ow, ow! And we're immediately getting shot. Are you the Dr. Poultrygeist's minions? Oh no, they're just oh, the I forgot Dr. Poultrygeist even existed. Yeah, he's, isn't very menacing. He made an announcement. Hey, I'm here! I'm doing evil things! Okay, bye now! Okay, bye! You'll see me later! Hey, doctor, I got a brain in a jar for you. The world is full of mystery. What have you discovered while out on your adventures? Brain, here you go. Due to technical difficulties, Mike will be voicing this speech option. <clears throat> what? Seriously? Hand it over. Hey, buddy. What you doing in there? Finally decide to stop being a creepy loner and come live with the rest of us? I appreciate you doing this for me, henchman. Dr. Abomination may be one of our more strange allies, but his processing power is unmatched. Ah, ah, ah. What? I'll send someone to get him a new shell in the disaster piece. Stop by Lab Alpha sometime and see how he's doing, all right? We'll do that, sure. And I suppose he's gonna want me to pay you for this. Here is a bonus to your paycheck, and also a few drinks for the road. Ha ha ha! He says ha 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 a lot, so this is in character. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were a couple of lines that weren't voiced. You're welcome. All right, see you later. Hey, yo! Henchman, you return. Do you have any good news? Do you have any good news? Well, that depends on if you like yourself or not. We found your clones. They're all alive. Well, that's good. That's very good. Well, that's my job for today. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep now. Right. Sleeping is fun. Yeah, it is. I find it very relaxing. It's like the free 30-day trial of death. As a reward... I'm gonna give you some life experience. And no, I'm not going to tell you some long, dull story of anything. Good, good. As much as I want to. Please don't. Impart some wisdom. I'm gonna telepathically shoot experience into your mind. That way you can grow as a person. And it'll finally put my XP transmitted to good use. You're already max level. Yeah. We didn't do it for the reward. Journey is uh, the only thing that matters. Jeez, well, thanks for no- <gasps> Mrs. Cactus! Oh, jeez. What are you doing here? How dare you? That is Mrs. Cactus's daughter. You are robbing the cradle. She's not even out of her planter yet. I don't, I don't want to be too judgmental or anything, you cactus pedophile. All right, now you're taking it too far. <laughs> I'm sorry, a febophile, whatever. It's Zack and the Cactus. One's thorny, one's horny. It's Zack and the Cactus. <laughs> that's, that's a good theme song, actually. Yeah, that, that would be a good theme song. In a few years, when she's legal. Good God. You just had to take a lovely moment and ruin it. Yep, that's what I do.